Well, I, I feel like the reason why you could say we got our swagger back is because we, we had kind of come to a point when it was like, all right, should we go out and, you know, celebrate the 20 years and, you know, kind of do that tour. And we weren't ready for that. It was like, no, we, we still have more to give. And so we kind of used that to motivate us to push ourselves harder. Welcome in to another Odyssey check-in at the Hard Rock New York Hotel, the Rockstar Suite with the Royal Lads King to Leon. Hello, gentlemen. How are you? Hello. Hi, good. Hello. hello. I got to imagine... Um, this is uh, an exciting time for Kings of Leon. It, it, it may I may I assume does Kings of Leon have their swagger? It feels a little swagger time with the the new song. I must think you right? could say That's Stella cool. got her groove back. The word Riz. Sure, the kids like the I Riz. Think, I think we've got some serious Riz right now. Sure, according to my daughter, um, whatever that means. So I went from cringe to Riz. So. I think that's a good thing. It's, a, it's an upgrade. I think that's an upgrade. <laughs> <laughs> now, if you notice, all around you are, are things from the Mustang video, if you don't mind. Uh, we've got some uh, <laughs> groceries that have fallen out of the, oh, the lady's hand. So you, cool. got a, you got a crutch and the Mustang and balloons behind you. Okay. Uh, of course, the, the masks that you can put on and don it. You guys are moment. awesome. Yeah, that's uh, <laughs> for I'm you. Not sure about this one. Yeah, in the big finale, we get to bust up open a pinata here in a second. That's very exciting. Oh, yeah. 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 I see it. Uh -huh. um, so you got the you feel like you got the swagger back. Uh, it's weird. Like we're you guys started reflecting the fact that you're starting into decade three in this band. Uh, this is kind of a weird feeling. Twenty years in, and you're feeling like you got a swagger back. You reflect any on that? Sure. Um, well, I, f I feel like the reason why you could say we got our swagger back is because we, we had kind of come to a point when it was like, all right, should we go out and, you know, celebrate the 20 years and, you know, kind of do that tour. And we weren't ready for that. It was like, no, we, we still have more to give. And so we kind of used that to motivate us to push ourselves harder and in the process i guess you could say we you know we kind of got back to our really creative ways and being a little more fearless and not thinking about the outcome of the music and just making stuff for us that made us smile and um and so yeah that's that's how we made music in the beginning and that's how we made this album so i guess there's the connection what was the difference between you said how you started making albums then and how you make them now. Uh, how was the process in between the beginning and now? Uh, what's different from, say, the last album and the album before? A lot less fun. Maybe we maybe we would overthink things at times where during this album we just kind of, like you said, let it kind of let it all go. Or you yeah. Know, yeah, I feel like you also kind of once you've had like a a successful album or a couple of songs that are big. You're either trying to not repeat that in a weird way to show yourself that you can do more or you are kind of thinking about that a little bit. And I feel like with this album, we weren't thinking about any of that. It was, I, I remember like I, I would have lyrics and I would be like, Ooh, I know they're going to hate it because it was quirky and it was fun but it was all very much like from an honest place and everyone ended up loving it. And I feel like we owned who we are. We didn't write songs about California or New York or anything like that. It's like, no, let's write about our backyard. Let's talk about this, who we are right now and be as honest as we can be. Um, and that reads, you know, when you hear music that's coming from that place, it's like, oh yeah, I'll, I like that because it's real. There's a big difference in making music that you think people want you to make and making music that you just feel and you want to make. And after success, a couple of big songs or whatever, it is easy to kind of, well, we kind of found that formula that people liked and it was big for us. Um, this was the total opposite of that, at least for me. It was, we didn't have a record label at the time. 
so what, there wasn't that pressure of a suit coming in at the end. I mean, like, okay, play me the two singles. Okay, yeah, blah, 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 and out the door. Um, this was more of we made it for ourselves, turned the studio into a clubhouse, basically. It sounds like it, it had to be a conscious decision, too, right? At some point, you had to look at yourselves and be like, eh, screw it, we're just going to do what we want, huh? Yeah, I, I mean, we haven't talked about it, but Kid, our, uh, we worked with Kid Harpoon on this one, and he's such a positive, almost like childlike, he just like up for anything, try this, try that, no rules or boundaries, and he like, he, he, he just got something out of us or at least allowed us to do things and he was super you know just fun and sweet and just got the vibes up and it was such a good vibe going in every single day and it just made us feel young again you brought up uh you you would bring in lyrics and you thought that they might hate it i mean i i think that if you're talking about mustang i mean <laughs> there's very few lyrics that you remember like are you a mustang or a kitty uh, who brought the, who brought that in? Who brought that to the table? I wrote that one. Yeah, I'm kidding. <laughs> no, that was that was me. Okay. Yeah, yeah that was uh, my. Uh, I mean, I owe it to my kids. Really, my son was wearing a Mustang T-shirt, and my daughter had YouTube videos of cats on, and so I was just kind of. It was like the opposites of them, uh, and I. I when when we went in the studio, I sang that part, not thinking it was going to be the lyric. And Tom Kid said, "He's like, so Mustang or a kitty?" And I was like, "Oh, you like that?" And he's like, "Yeah." I was like, "All right, let's go with that." It's amazing how the audience can go straight from oh, just the kids like it. Uh, that's yeah. fine. Yeah. Um, I think that I keep hearing the same word over and over from you guys, and it's just it's fun. I keep hearing consistently fun is the driving force. I also noticed that the album, Can We Please Have Fun, is not a question. It's a direct statement, huh? Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I feel like a lot of that was a thing. It was like, is it an exclamation point? Is it a question mark? And I never really knew what the answer to that was. I knew it wasn't like a demand. Like, uh, it was more of just like, oh, can we please have fun? Can we enjoy the process? Can we not stick to the rule book? Can we not uh, feel like we have to have a commentary on the state of the world right now? Um, and like I say, just be creative and look around and let things inspire us and write songs about silly things. And, you know, if you're enjoying what you're writing, truth will come out in it and, uh, you know, real emotion will come out in something that is seemingly silly. Well, the other thing that I, I've always appreciated about you guys is that you don't shy, you use the word inspiration. You guys don't shy away from saying, man, I really liked what I heard here. I mm -hmm. want to try and do... I remember you saying something about Mechanical Bull being inspired by Queens of the Stone Age, right? Is that... Uh, um, song or two, for sure. Yeah. Any, any inspirations or influences for this album? Uh, probably lots. Before we go in, we all try to get on the same kind of wavelength and get on the same page musically. And so we, I think we got a little playlist together and sent it around and we would add to it. And, you know, um, it, it, we all kind of bring our own stuff too. Like I, I was the only one that didn't listen to the playlist. I, yeah. I never knew how to do or how to add to it or anything. It's weird. Cause like stuff happens. I'm pretty sure I had a suicide song on there. Um, and like, uh, we ended up using, you know, we drew from a band suicide that had, you know, a really cool uh, drum machine type thing that we ended up using on a few different songs. We were also in such a creative mind space and we were all linked up. So it was a thing where I would hear a song and get inspired by it and be like, all right. And it would inspire a song. And then as soon as the song was written, I would go back to that song that inspired it and it wasn't doing it for me anymore. It was like, I, I just used it for what I needed and like it gave me the juice. And then it was like, I don't know what made me hear that song or, or love it, but it gave us, you know, it gave us what we needed. I saw you guys last in 2010 at Bonnaroo, and I'm standing on stage with uh, watching the Flaming Lips, and I look to the left. I'm like, well, I think that's Kings of Leon, and I also think that's McLovin. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you guys are just palling around, walking around McLovin. Um, yeah. That's got to be one of your strangest 
strangest friends. He's he's group. a bud. He's still <laughs> he's still one of our buddies. Um, he, he's a he, peer now. Oh, yeah, he's in the band. He's a he's a he's a band guy now. His name is Christopher. Yeah, so he's a peer now. Okay, but no, that was when you first meet him, and especially in a situation like that, yeah. flaming lips. Other people are taking mushrooms. Sure, uh, much lots. Of we other asked him to stop. They <laughs> kept doing it. Um, like, and you've got at that time, you know, who we would call McLovin. Sure, it was definitely a wild. Did we? But play, that's the. the that didn't we play scratching the surface? Nah, ah, okay. Well, nah, then do tell. Nah. Didn't we play a show one time and look in the back and Bill Murray was just standing in the back, the NFL draft, yeah. something, some it kind of a part. Something. I, I, we just looked in the back. Big, I'm like, well, uh, that kind of looks like Bill Murray back there. It was something uh, he definitely wasn't invited to and definitely would never have been to this event. We said, what are you doing here? Get out. What yeah. the hell? That was yeah. a big fail by me afterwards. I was like, all I had to do was just acknowledge him and then we probably would have got to meet him. Uh -huh. And you'd have a classic Bill Murray story, just like everybody yeah. else. Yeah. We um, messed up. The Royal Lads of Kingdoms of Leon, we appreciate you on this uh, Odyssey check-in. I have uh, one more thing for us to do, if you don't mind. There is a because of the video, you know, Mustang video, we have a Mustang pinata hanging Ooh. up for you to bash its head in. If you would like, it's all yours. Cool. You want a piece? Yeah. Wow. Oh, that was intense. Yeah, that was a little aggressive. I'm sorry for that. <laughs> <laughs> that was a little fire. Also, if you notice, inside are Mustangs and pitties. Oh. I broke some stuff. I'm rich. Finish him. This is cool. Oh yeah, I'm sure my sick kids will love these. I did like is this a sheep break yeah, a them. Yeah. Some of these are breakable. Is there a glass one in there, Jared? There's lots of glass ones, and they're all. Oh, Jared, you broke the glass ones. Yeah. Uh, can you guys just walk 